Hi everyone, this is Rich of the Rich Maxwell channel. Welcome back. This channel is about drones, photography, and a bit of videography. So in this video, I'm doing a bit of a tutorial about how to shoot a time-lapse. So time-lapses are really cool little videos or clips that you can put together just a few seconds long that are showing hours worth of uh, photographic footage. So I'm going to show you specifically how to do it in a Sony camera, like this Sony a7 II or any of the A6000 series cameras or any of the newer A7 cameras like the a7 III or a7R III or whatever camera you've got from Sony, you can do these time lapses. So to do these time lapses, all you need to get is the time lapse app in the Sony camera. So the time lapse app, I've been really pleased with it. I'm finding I get some great results from it. And it is really handy in that you purchase it once on the App Store from Sony, and then you can get it on all of your Sony cameras in future as well. So I've got a 6300 and the a7 II, and I've got the app on both cameras. So that's really handy about it. Uh, the other option though, if you don't want to purchase the app, is to get an intervalometer, which is a little device that plugs into your camera and then controls the shutter uh, for your camera and various other settings. So you can set that then to take a photograph every 10 seconds, 5 seconds or whatever you need for your time lapse. But the app has got some advantages over using that. So I really like the Sony app for time lapses, highly recommend it and I'm going to go through in this tutorial how you can use that app and how you can then put your images together into a superb time lapse in Lightroom and Premiere Pro. So onto the camera now then and I'm going to show you the settings and how to get to that, uh, that app and get started. So once you've purchased the time lapse app for your Sony camera, you can access it by going into the applications menu. So we'll just start from the beginning, turning on the camera, and it's going to boot up into time lapse mode as I was in time lapse mode last time I used the camera. Um, so that makes it straightforward as we're already in the application, but normally you would just go into your, your menu and then select the application. So I'll just show you where you find that. So I'm exiting the application for now. And now going into our menu. And then at the top, we look for those little squares there, application list. And then we've got time lapse. If you haven't purchased it yet, I think it's application management or play memory camera, app, camera apps where you can go and purchase it in the Sony store. The really good thing about buying the app is that once you've bought it, you can use it on all of your Sony cameras. You just log into your Sony store account on any new camera that you get in future, and then you can download the time-lapse app again. So that's really cool. And then when you get into the time-lapse app, you'll get this menu. So you've got various options for your time-lapses. You can do night scenes and night skies, cloudy sky, and uh, yeah, make custom ones. So you've got loads of different options. This morning I did a, a sunset one, and the good thing with the Sony app is it'll automatically change your exposure settings so that as the sun rises and it obviously gets much brighter, the settings of your camera will automatically change and uh, you won't get just a load of blown out images with blown out highlights towards the end of your time lapse. So that's really handy with it. And then once you, you've picked what sort of time lapse you want to do, you can go into it and you'll see all your settings here. So it's got your interval, how many shots it's going to take and how long that's going to take. And you can either set it to film it as a video all in camera, so you don't really have to then do any editing as far as I'm aware. But the better way to do it is set it so that it takes a load of photographs. So to do that, you'll go to application settings and then in the application settings, you've got file format at the top. One of them looks like a tape, so that's the filming, uh, the video mode sort of setting. Uh, but I always choose the picture mode, or you can do both. But yeah, the picture mode will just enable it to take a load of photographs at its uh, full megapixel count, so you'll get much better quality images, and also images then that you can take into Lightroom and, uh, and edit up to make your time lapse look extra special. So you can choose your interval, obviously the further apart the seconds are, the longer overall the time lapse will go on for. So uh, with these Sony cameras, they obviously don't have the best batteries in the world. So you may need to invest in a battery grip if you want to do a really long time lapse, or you can get a dummy battery and then plug in external power to your camera, which is something that uh, I've got on the way from Amazon. So hopefully I'm going to be able to use that soon to get really long time lapses of like a whole day and stuff like that. That'd be really cool. And then, uh, yeah, you've got the exposure, uh, lock exposure, you can track it to track the exposure settings 
but yeah, picking your shots and interval is the main things that you need to look at really. And then choose the picture setting for what we're going to do here. And there is various other options in the menu system. Make sure your quality is set to raw so you've got the best capability then to edit after. And you can either use uh, autofocus or you can set it to manual focus if you prefer. Uh, if you're doing a landscape shot, it might be better if you do it as a manual focus to focus in on something, say, in your foreground or in your, your landscape further away. Um, but yeah, you've got the options then all set. So uh, just press the shutter slightly down and we're back to the time lapse start menu. And all you've got to do is press the button, two seconds countdown to stop any shutter shaking in your tripod, and then it's going to start taking photos. Uh, looks like I've actually got the uh, lens cap on, so it's going to just take a load of black images if I leave this. So we'll turn that off then and turn the camera off. And we're going to jump into Lightroom next and talk about how to edit after the camera has taken all its shots. Ported, and we're in Lightroom. So first off in Lightroom, if you want to make some adjustments to your image to make it all pop out and stand out, this is the time to do it. So uh, just for this image, I've done some basic stuff on it already, but I'm going to reset all that. We'll just start from the beginning. So set our white balance to where we want it. Exposure's a bit dark, so I could lift that a bit. And blacks, lift those up. Lift up the shadows, bring out a bit of detail there. Bring the highlights down so we can hopefully see a bit more of that sky. Clarity down, texture up a little bit. Maybe a bit of dehaze. And I'll take the saturation down, vibrance up slightly. But this is just me sort of messing around with the image for the sake of this video. So not really a, a true way that I'd probably edit the video, uh, the time lapse. And I've actually already shot this this uh, tutorial once, but didn't quite record the screen properly. So I'm just having to reshoot all of this. So hopefully I'm not rushing through it, but. That's a quick edit done on the first picture in the time-lapse uh, photo folder. So now what we're going to want to do is sync the edits across all of the images in this folder. So hold down shift and select the last image in the sequence. So they're all highlighted and then we click sync and we're going to spread all of those adjustments across all of the images. But before I do that, what I've forgotten here is to crop the image in. So we want a 16 by 9 sort of crop, as that's typically what we're going to want a video to, to be in. And then we're going to sync it, make sure crop's ticked, make sure any local adjustments are ticked if you've done any of those. And then we're going to synchronize the, uh, the edit. So that should be all synced now and then if you're happy with everything but if you spent well if you want to spend a bit more time on your images make sure there's no birds you can cut those out go onto each individual image and do a few edits then uh, that could be a good option but for the sake of this tutorial we're just going to assume that those all look good and then we're going to go and export them so when we export we're just going to pick a folder to put them into so i've already got sky time lapse shot there so that'll do uh, we don't want to rename the, fo the files to anything as they'll already be in a nice numbered sequence which is going to help us out in the next part of the tutorial. Uh, we're going to set it to JPEGs 100%. I'm uh, not going to put a watermark in. You could put a watermark in if you have a watermark and you want to use it. But if you want to upload to things like stock videography websites then uh, of course you're not going to want your watermark in there. So export all that. I have already exported my images for the sake of this tutorial though. So um, not going to do that this time, but you'd export that. Then they will all be in the folder that you've exported to. And then you're ready to go into Premiere Pro. So Premiere Pro, our video editing software of choice. So we're going to do a new project and that's just popped up on my other monitor. So dragging it across. And so we're going to just call it Tree time lapse so check it's the right drive everything that you want and that you're happy with it click ok i've already done this project so i'll go time uh, tree time lapse two or tree time lapse one whatever it was i pressed there uh, don't need to worry about that for now it's just because i had my headphones on last time i used premiere pro but now we're in premiere pro we've got a nice empty project we have nothing going on so to get our images in we click import 
from the file menu, click the first image, make sure image sequence is ticked just there, that little blue box, little tick box, and then click open. So it's just one image clicked and then open and that's gonna import all of the images in sequence. So we've got them all in just one little file in our project folder and that's ready to drag into the timeline. And that is basically a time-lapse done, as simple as that. So that will work as it is at the moment. I can export that from Premiere Pro and that will be a nice little AVI video that I can then watch on uh, uh, Facebook, YouTube, wherever, share it wherever I want. But if you want to make it a bit better, I'm going to speed it up to 200%. That's going to make it just seven seconds long from those 350 images. And then we're going to export that, export media, choose a place to export to and a file name for it. So tree, tree time lapse, save that. And then at the moment, the resolution is slightly higher than 4K. You'll see that from this little bit here. So it's 4910 by 2762. That's because the images that I exported from Lightroom were obviously 24 megapixel images, but cropped in a bit. So they're not quite the full 24 megapixels, but they're a higher res than 4K. So uh, we're gonna just change this to be a normal 4K video file. So to do that, I'm just gonna select uh, high quality 4K video. Uh, that is there. And then that's gonna set the resolution automatically to 3840 by 2160. So that's just what we want. Make sure render at maximum depth is ticked. Don't need to worry about too much else, but I'm gonna do VBR two pass. I'm gonna set the bit rate to 100 so that I retain as much detail as possible and get a nice image and also render at maximum render quality but yeah make sure it's VBR 2 pass 100 and then this shouldn't take too long to export as it's a very little file it's only 86 megabytes so it's obviously just a seven second clip this time lapse so it shouldn't take too long and then we'll have our completed time lapse that should be showing on screen now and as you can see, it looks pretty cool. That's just a quick time lapse done from my window this morning at uh, about 6 a.m. at the sun rising. Uh, obviously, I'm stuck at home at the moment due to the current uh, lockdown and virus situation, so not really getting to go out and take many time lapses. But at the start of the video, you'll have seen a few time lapses there that I've done in the past with this Sony camera app. Highly recommend it. I think it's a great thing to just get for your Sony camera in the Sony app store and opens up the possibility to make these easy and creative little time-lapse videos. Like I said, if you want to spend a bit more time in the editing part in Lightroom, that can really pay off and help you produce some great images. So hope this has helped you guys, and if you like the video, please do give it a like on here, as that will help the content get out to more people and just help my little channel here on YouTube grow. And if you liked it that much that you want to subscribe, I'd really appreciate that. And we'd look forward to seeing you guys on more videos and hopefully I can produce some more good content for you. Thanks everyone. Bye for now.